Good morning, First Assembly. If you would, just stand and worship with us. you my holy father blessed is the lamb of god blessed is the lamb of god praise the lamb praise the lamb blessed is the lamb of god we glorify your name we glorify your name praise the lord amen well you may be seated just for a moment it is so good to have you in the house of the lord are you glad to be in the house of the lord today i am too i look forward to Sundays, I know some of y'all have been in quarantine and some of y'all have been recovering. And I, seen, I said to, uh, to James and, and Zia, I said, I don't know how long it's been since I've seen you, but it feels, feels like a very long time. And uh, so it's good to have everybody back in the house uh, who's here. Well, let me go over some of the announcements for you. Don't forget the baby shower blessing table out in the foyer for Matthew and Sherry McGinnis. They had their little baby boy back in December. And uh, we want to be a blessing to them. They're registered at Walmart, Target, and Amazon. They'll be there one more Sunday. Also, there is a district marriage enrichment or marriage retreat taking place February 12th and 13th. The cost is 150 per per, uh, per couple, excuse me. And there is a sign-up list out there. If you have any questions, see Pastor Samantha. She'll be able to answer all of those for you. Also, the kids are going to be doing a fundraiser for BGMC uh, and camp, getting all that stuff ready to go. Y'all pray that we can have camp this year, okay? I don't know if I could go two years without camp. And so y'all pray that we are going to be able to have camp this year, but we want to be ready just in case. And so uh, they're going to be a a bed sheet fundraiser. This was they did a great job last year with this, and so uh, that will begin the 31st of this month. 
And so if you have any questions, see Pastor Smith again for that. Also, we have the, the tentative dates in which we are going to go to youth and kids camp. So if you have grandchildren, you have children that would like to go to camp, uh, we've got those dates written down in the bulletin. They're also, uh, the camp forms are available, so see Pastor Jonathan and Pastor Samantha, and they'll be able to help you out with those. Uh, do my giving slide. You think I'd remember all this by now, but my brain doesn't think all this all the time. If you like to give, you can text the word "give" to eight seven zero two two four four two one one. You go to our website www.wfaliving.com. Go to the giving portion of the screen. You can mail your tithes and offering in to those who are online. PO Box. 1085 Wynn, Arkansas, or we've got a giving receptacle out there in the foyer uh, that we want you to make use of as you're coming in and going out. Thank you so much for your faithfulness and giving to the Lord. I know God's going to bless you. Well, we've got a presentation that we need to do. So, Sister Teresa, are you, Meredith, who's doing it? Teresa is? Come on up, Sister Teresa. This morning, uh, we are here to um, honor someone that has gone through uh, one of our programs and has completed it. Uh, she went in through uh, Lifeline, and she's completed the Stepping into Freedom. Her name is Kamiko, and um, she came to us. Uh, she did 13 weeks of it, and so we are so proud to be able to present to her uh, a certificate saying that she has completed it. And she said she would like to say a few words, so I'm going to let her. <laughs> Good morning. Well, okay. I just wanted to say that the program has really been good to me. It's been a blessing. It's really opened my eyes to different things, how to handle different situations. Miss Teresa and Mr. Mike, they have been really, 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 really good. It just makes the difference in me. Right? look at things a totally different way and Mr. Mike he's real in depth with the Bible the stories of the Bible like I've learned so much and it's just been a blessing to me and I told Miss Teresa I said it she said it's other programs and I said I'd like to be a part of that also because maybe I could be a blessing to someone else and help them the way it's helped me to present this to Kamiko now. Thank you, Kamiko. I do need to tell you, she, she, <laughs> she is one that really endured. Um, she was uh, pregnant when she came to us, and her first week she came down with COVID. So she was in quarantine, so she had to do it through Zoom. But she was also nine months pregnant. And so um, into her third week, I think it was, she, went, she had to have a C-section. And it was done on Monday morning, well, around noon, wasn't it? At 6 o'clock that night, she did Zoom and did, co and did their lesson with us. Now, that is determination. Then she, went to, then she had to go to work a couple weeks ago. And they allowed her to take off an hour to do Zoom <laughs> and do it with us. So um, she has really endured a lot this last 13 weeks. And to her to be able to complete this and go through it is just such a blessing. And um, we need more facilitators. We need more people. I wanted her to come so you could see a face to someone that needed us. And we were there. And I am so thankful that God has placed this here in Wynn, Arkansas. So if you are interested in helping us in any way to facilitate, please, please let me, Meredith, Mike, Melody, um, Ethan know, because we would love to have y'all your help with it. Thank y'all so much for your support. Amen. Let's let's stand and worship after that. Ooh. 
when we have raised a thousand voices just to lift your holy name and we will raise thousands more to sing of your beauty in this place oh no none can even fathom no not one to find your word as we marvel in your presence to the ends of the Cause we give you glory Lifting up our hands and singing holy You alone are worthy We just want to touch your heart Lord, touch your heart Oh glory Lifting up our voice and singing holy You alone are worthy We just want to touch your heart Lord your heart and as we fall down before you with willing hearts we seek in the greatness of your glory it's so hard to even speak oh there's nothing we can offer oh no nothing can repay so we your heart, Lord, touch your heart, oh glory, lifting up our voice and singing holy, you alone are worthy, we just want to touch your heart, Lord, touch your heart, cause our hope is drenched in you, our faith has been renewed, and we trust in your every can even measure up to you, oh glory, lifting up our hands and singing holy, you alone are worthy, we just want to touch your heart, Lord, touch your heart, oh glory, lifting up our voice and singing holy, you alone are worthy. Just want to touch your heart, Lord, touch your heart. As you stood before creation, eternity in your hand you spoke the earth into motion my soul now to stand cause you stood before my failure you carried the cross for my shame sin weighed upon your shoulders my soul now to stand so what can I say what can I do but offer this heart oh
so what can I say? And what can I do? But offer this heart, oh God, completely. So I'll stand with arms high and heart abandoned in all of the one who gave it all. And I'll stand my soul, Lord, to you surrendered all I am is yours. And so I'll stand and I'll stand. Of the one who gave it all, and I'll stand my soul, Lord, to you surrendered all I am is yours. Oh, cause all I am is yours, all I am, oh Lord, all I am is yours. And what can I do but offer this heart, oh God, completely to you? stars they wept the morning sun was dead the savior of the world was fallen his body on the cross his blood poured out for us the weight of every curse upon him Final breath he gave as heaven looked away. The Son of God was laid in darkness. A battle in the grave, the war on death was waged. The power of hell forever. The stone was rolled away, his perfect love could not be overcome. Now death, where is your sting? Our resurrected King has rendered you defeated, now forever.
Now death, where is your sting? A resurrected King has rendered you defeated. Now forever He is glorified. Forever He is lifted high.
call upon the name that's above every name right now Jesus there is power in your name today there is power in the name of Jesus father even when we don't know what else to say if we could just say Jesus in your name oh God in your name oh God we take comfort in your name oh God there is shelter in your name oh God there is healing in your name, O oh God, there is victory. We glorify your name. We glorify the name that's above every name. We glorify you, Lord. We glorify you, Lord. Hallelujah. Let's call upon the name of the Lord right now, if you will. We've buried two of our members this week. Let's pray for Evelyn Hodge's family. 
God will minister to Bev and Sherry and bring comfort and strength uh, in this time of loss. We also buried Brother Rodney Ellis yesterday. Pray for Sister Lillian, that God will strengthen her and, and their son, Roger, that God will just wrap their, his arms around them. Uh, many need a touch in their body today. Uh, pray for Pat Andrews, that God would touch her and Brother Eli. Pray for Doug and Francis Smith, that God would minister to them. Pray for Justine Reynolds, that God would touch her lungs and cause pneumonia to, to leave and strength to fill her once again. Pray for Derek, that God would continue to strengthen him. I'm ready for him to be on this organ. And uh, let's just, there's many. I mean, I, I'm, I'm forgetting somebody. But how many has a need upon their heart just by an uplifted hand saying, Pastor, pray for me. God needs to touch me in a special way. Will you lift up your voice with me and lift your face up with touch heaven? Father, we join our faith together and we call upon the name that's above every name. There is power in the name of Jesus. It breaks chains. It breaks strongholds. It causes the fevered brow to cool, O oh God. And it causes the lame to walk and the blind to see and the deaf to, to hear and the Lord, we just pray right now in Jesus' name that you will touch every need that was represented by an uplifted hand. Father, we pray that you can do it. Lord, you're the only one that can do it. And so if we, we call upon that name and we ask in the powerful name of Jesus that before we even speak it out of our mouth, Lord, you know. And you said, Lord, that even as we are praying, the answer has come. And so, Father, we receive in the powerful name of Jesus. But Father, we lift up these that need a touch that are not able to be here today. Father, we pray for the ones that have lost loved ones. We pray for the Ellis family and the, the Hodge family, Lord God, that you would bless them. Oh, Holy Spirit, move upon their families. But Lord, it's not just families that need a ministering to. Lord, they're family and friends in this church body, oh God. We love them. And that will leave a hole in our hearts. And we pray for comfort today. We ask, O oh Holy Spirit, that you would breathe fresh life into these families, Lord. We ask, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, that you'll touch those that are not able to be here because of sickness in their body. We lift up Doug to you. We lift up Pat Andrews to you, Lord. Minister to them, Father, we pray. Touch their bodies in a powerful way. We pray for their caregivers, Lord. Francis and Eli, Lord, that you would bless them and minister and strengthen them in a powerful way. We lift up Justine, God. Lord, we know that you can speak a word and go distance and miles and hours away. And Father, we pray for, we pray for restoration in her lungs. We command pneumonia to leave right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Strength fill her. We pray for Derek, O oh God. We thank you for the work that you have already done in his body. And we pray in the mighty name of Jesus that you will continue to give him strength and that his heart beats the way you designed it to beat, O oh God. We lift up Wes and Cricket to you today. O oh Holy Spirit, comfort, strengthen, restore, we pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we glorify you, we extol you, we adore you, and we give you the praise, the glory, and all of the honor in Jesus' glorious name. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Well, you may be seated if you can. Praise the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. If you have your Bibles with you, I want you to turn to the book of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 31, and we'll read the first uh, eight verses of Scripture there. Deuteronomy chapter 31, and then we will read verses 1 through 8. When you have it, if you will, in honor of the reading of the Word of God, stand... <clears throat> The scripture says, so Moses continued to speak these words to all Israel, and he said to them, I am 120 years old today, for I am no longer able to go out and come in. The Lord has said to me, you shall not go over this Jordan. 
For the Lord your God himself will go over before you, and he will destroy the nations before you, so that you shall, uh, shall dispose, pose, possess them. And Joshua will go over at your head, as the Lord has spoken. And the Lord will do to them as he did to Sihon and Og, the kings of the Amorites, and to their land when he destroyed them. And the Lord will give them over to you, and you shall do to them according to the whole commandment that I have commanded you. Be strong and courageous. Do not fear or be in dread of them, for it is the Lord your God who goes with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. Look at that last one. Do not fear or be in dread of them, for it is the Lord your God who goes with you. He will not leave you or forsake you. Father, we thank you for your word. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that you will allow your word to become life to us. Speak to our hearts. Challenge us in this year to let you be God. And Father, we love you and we thank you for your goodness and your mercy today. Give me the words to speak at the right time for the right person at the right moment. In Jesus' glorious name, amen and amen. God bless you. You may be seated. We've been on a journey the last couple of weeks, introducing to you the new theme of our year, Let God Be God. Two weeks ago, well, the last two weeks, we we were reading from Jeremiah chapter 24. And in Jeremiah chapter 24, we were simply discussing and unfolding this simple phrase that you will see, All throughout the Old Testament, I will be their God and they will be my people. Or you would see it flip around. They will be my people and I will be their God. What does that look like? How does that transpose to us today in the New Testament age of the church? What does that look like this year in 2021? I almost said 2020. I I don't want to live 2020 again. 2021, what does that look like to us? How does that unfold? How, how does let God be God become a reality in our lives? The first day or the first week we talked about that that happens with uh, surrendering. That we have to surrender our life to God. We have to give God our whole heart and let God do what He wants to do in our lives. It becomes an intimate relationship with Him that allows Him to be God in our lives. Last week we talked about how the word God in that portion of Scripture means the supreme God. That He is the name that's above every name. There is no other God beside our God. He is the one that took absolutely nothing and created something so that you and I are enjoying today. And your God will do the same thing in your life. He will take the nothingness of your life and create something good and beautiful out of it. He takes the beauty Or He takes ashes and creates beauty out of those ashes for your life. That's the Almighty God that we're talking about. That is Elohim. That is the supreme God of your life. That He is worthy of all of the praise, the glory, and the the honor. Because He's God. And in the midst of worshiping God and giving Him glory and honor and praising Him, which leads me to my next, uh, uh, my next point on how to let God be God. We need to let God be God through guidance. Now, here we see in this portion of Scripture in Deuteronomy, we will be jumping back and forth in the Old Testament probably quite a bit this year to see what God, let God be God to us. But we see here, that the children of Israel are getting ready to possess the land in which God is, has declared to them, this is your inheritance. This is the land that is flowing with milk and honey. This is the land that I told your forefather Abraham that was going to belong to his descendants. And, and so this is your land. Moses, Moses brought them through some pretty amazing ev- events in their lives. Here they are in, in, in Egypt, and God is delivering the children of Israel out of Egypt. We saw the, the plagues that, w- that, that took place in Egypt and how God miraculously provided for them that even on the eve of them exiting Egypt, you remember what happened? God told them, go knock on the Egyptians' doors and ask for gold and ask for fine linens and ask for all of the riches that you need so that when you go out into the wilderness and when you go out into the promised land that you will be well-to-do. And guess what they did? 
They knocked, and guess what happened? And the Lord gave them favor, and they gave riches and gold and fine linens and wood. I mean, the Lord blessed them as they were coming out of the land of Egypt, out of the land of bondage for them. And so they're on this journey. Moses is leading them out to the promised land. They're on the eve of the promised land. They're on the banks of the promised land. They sent out, they sent out spies. Do you all remember this? They sent out spies, 12 spies. And, and out of the 12, only two gave a good report. Two of them. Joshua and Caleb said, listen, guys, we can do this. Guys, yes, they're big. Yes, there are fortified cities. Yes, but if God is for us, and if God says this land belongs to us, it's ours, and it's going to be a done deal. And they were, they were being the biggest cheerleaders of God in that moment. But it was the other ten that said, there's no way. We are like grasshoppers in our own eyes compared to them. They are massive. There's no way we can overtake them. And because of their lack of faith, Because they were not willing to let God be God, they had to wander. They had to wander. They wandered for 40 years until that generation died off and the new generation come up. Joshua and Caleb were the only two out of that generation that was going to inherit uh, this wonderful promised land. And now this is where we're seeing Moses is saying, listen guys, I can't go further. Y'all remember? He he, he rebelled against the the voice of the Lord. God told him to speak to the rock to give water and out of his frustration and anger just like most of us he took a stick and he beat the rock but guess what water still poured forth from that rock but his his punishment was you are not going to be able to inherit the promised land you'll see it from a distance but joshua your successor is going to lead them in and here we see here we see that the children of israel can you imagine what it would have been like wandering for 40 years in the desert land Watching God do all of these miraculous things. And now we have heard from one generation to the next generation. God has given us a land that will belong to us. No more wandering. No more borrowing somebody else's wells. No more uh, 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 using somebody else's land. We will have our own homestead. We'll have our own houses. Matter of fact, the Bible tells them that they, they're going to inherit farmland that they didn't even cultivate that they're going to go out there and reap a harvest when they didn't even sold in this generation is sitting there going man we're excited all we have to do is go and claim it and moses spoke these words to him it says you shall go over there and you're going to possess the land and this is what he said in verse five he says and the lord will give them over to you and you shall do to them according to the whole commandment that I have commanded you. Be strong and courageous. Do not be fear and do not be uh, dread them for the Lord your God who goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. God wants to be God in your life through guidance. See, this, this group of people, there's no way they could have inherited the promised land if God didn't go before them. If God didn't go before them. And so, as they're getting ready to go forward from this point forward, I want to show you how God manifested His direction in their life. There are three different areas that I want us to bring out tonight, or this morning. And the first one is this, that God's direction and guidance for their life was manifested in the pillar of fire by night and a pillar of cloud by day as they were walking in the wilderness. Look at Exodus chapter 13. Exodus chapter 13. We see God speaking to Moses about what is going to take place. Verse 17 is where God is speaking. He says, when Pharaoh let the people go, God did not lead them by way of the land of the Philistines, although that was near. For God said, lest the people change their mind when they see war and return to Egypt. But God led the people around by the way of the wilderness towards the Red Sea. And the people of Israel went up out of the land of Egypt equipped for battle. Number one, God's going to always equip you for battle, my friends. Be ready because God has equipped you. Verse 19, Moses took the bones of Joseph with him. For Joseph had made the sons of Israel solemnly swear, saying, God will surely visit you, and you shall carry up my bones with you from here. 
And they moved on from Sukkoth and encamped there at Etham on the edge of the wilderness. And the Lord, listen, the Lord went before them by day in the pillar of cloud to lead them um, along the way and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light that they might travel by day and by night. The pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night did not depart from before the people. How many knows, even just by reading this scripture, that the wilderness can be a pretty hairy situation that we encounter? The wilderness was not the most ideal uh, 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 trek that, that, uh, that they could have gone. Matter of fact, the Bible says that the easiest way would have gone through the land of the Philistines, but they would have had to wage war to go through the land of the Philistines. So what God did is He did a supernatural thing and took them through the wilderness. The wilderness was their track. The wilderness was the way in which God was going to give them the promise of their life. My friends, I don't know where you're at today. I don't know what part of, of your journey that, you are, or, that you're on and what route God has chose to brought you through. But I guarantee you, many of us, if not all of us, have gone through a wilderness. A dry, barren walk. There's no fruit. There's no water. It seems like, there, it seems like the, the heat of the day just keeps blaring down on you. I've been there. I've walked this road following the guidance of the Holy Spirit, hoping that God is leading me. In the, how many how many's ever sat there and said, God, I sure hope you know what you're doing? I have. I've said it many times. God, I, I know you're God. And I know you're leading me. But boy, I sure wish you would just give me some kind of nugget of, of hope because right now, it doesn't feel like hope. It doesn't look like hope. I, I know that there's a land flowing with milk and honey, but this, this land, and many times, even the children of Israel said, Moses, you brought us out to the desert to die. I mean, it looked like death. The wilderness moment of our lives can feel very lonely, my friends. Even when you have a million people around you like the children of it. Listen, they, 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 they traveled in a big old family clan. And as the pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night stood still, guess what happened? They pitched their tents around the, the glory of God. Now, in Exodus, we see after God given this, this word to Moses that God also instructs Moses on what to do from here on out. He says, I'm going to create a tabernacle that you're going to be able to come and you're going to be able to worship me and you're going to, you're going to be able to bring offerings and sacrifices to me and I will be in the midst of my people. I want to be with my people. I want to guide them with my presence. So when the pillar of cloud stopped, or when the pillar of fire stopped, guess what? They made camp. And as they made camp, they had three tribes on the east side, three tribes on the west side, three tribes on the north side, and three tribes on the south side. And as they were doing, they, they, every time they came out of their tent, guess what they saw? The presence of God. The glory of God. They were around all of their neighbors. But my friends, sometimes the wilderness experience can feel lonely. You can have a group of people all the way around you. You can have family members sitting there encouraging you. And my friends, I've been there before. I know what I'm talking about. You feel lonely. You feel like no one sees you. You feel like no one cares. But can I tell you something? The moment you step out and you see the presence of God, you see the glory of God, you know within your knower that you're not alone. The Bible says that God says, I will never leave you or forsake you. The moment that they saw that pillar of cloud and the pillar of fire, God, they had a reassurance that even though they feel alone, they feel forgotten, they feel like they don't know where they're going, that they look at that promise and said, you know what, my God said that He will never leave me nor forsake me. And if my God goes before me, I can follow Him with confidence. I don't know where you're at in your walk right now, but if you need to let God be God and he's going to guide you even in the midst of your wilderness he will guide you into all truth listen the wilderness can feel scary when you don't know what's going on around you you don't know what kind of wild animals are out there they didn't have guns you know, they didn't have all of the, 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 the weaponry that you and I have today that when we're out in the woods, you know, 
you know why I don't go turkey hunting? It's because there's these little slithering things. I don't do slithering things. Matter of fact, when we were getting ready to move here from Fordyce, we had a, an old above ground pool and, and to drain all the water. I mean, the thing was just a mess. It's already made one trip from Perryville to Fordyce. It wasn't going to survive another trip from Fordyce to, to win. And so I just slit the, the, the lining of it, let it drain out, and then I, I was going to just roll them up and throw it away instead of this big old, this big old uh, uh, swimming pool. Well, so I just let it dry it out. So I had it all flaying out like a big old uh, 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 flower. And here I am, tired of looking at this swimming pool. I'm going to start, you know, breaking it down in smaller pieces and rolling it up. And I pull up one little thing, and guess what? A little slithery thing went, <laughs> scared the mess out of me. Yes, it was the good snake. But let me tell you something. When a snake goes <laughs> at me, it's dead. So I found me a shovel and I just went, gah, 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 gah. yes, it was a king snake. Yes, I know you want those around because they do, they, they take care of the bad snakes. But my friends, it's a slithery thing. So I don't, I don't do turkey hunting just for that reason because I don't want no slithery thing come across my path. But I, you know, when you're in the wilderness, they didn't know what was going to get them. They didn't have a clue. They didn't know what kind of the terrain, and it can be very scary. Wandering in the wilderness, man, there's been times in my own life when it was dry and it was barren and it was a time of loneliness. It, it scared me because, number one, I thought God had forgotten me. I'm like David. Oh, Lord, do not remove your spirit from me. It was, a, it was a moment that was scary to me because I, I didn't know what was taking place. I, I, it, I, everything was going good one moment and all of a sudden now it's drying and barren. My prayers seemed like they were hitting a brass ceiling. My, my praise was just empty. It, it, it seemed like I, all my tears was just, just falling to my, from my face and it was going nowhere. My, how, many, how many's been there before? How many's been there when you sit there and you're trying to call on the name of the Lord and you don't know if He's really there? My friends, when they looked out and when they were in fear and when they were in trembling and they didn't know what was going to take place, they saw the pillar of fire and they saw the, 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 the pillar of cloud by day and they had something rise up with inside them. Why? Because over here Moses told them, Moses told them that God says that He will be with you and He will lead you and He will do it by a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. So my friends, hear me today. In your wilderness experience, in that moment where you feel dry and empty and barren and you don't know if God even has your number on His cell phone, I've come to tell you today, God's got your number on His cell phone and you don't have to be afraid of what the wilderness experience is all about about because there is a presence of God that is leading you and guiding you and comforting you. So just lift up your head from, from to the hills from whence your help comes from. Your help comes from the Lord my friends. And I have come today to let you know if you will just let God be God, He will guide you even in the wilderness experience. How do I know He's done it for Israel? And if He'll do it for Israel, my, my friends, I, if I was a betting man, I would bet God would do it for you and you would come out because we're on this side of the cross. We're on this side of grace. And my friends, God will give you what you need in that moment. Listen, even the wilderness experience can be confusing at times. I know I've shared this with y'all many times before, but it really fits this moment. My, my wife and I won a, uh, a silent auction or something like that of a, of a, a, a night stay at the Wynn Rockefeller Center up on top of Pettigene Mountain. And uh, so we went, we went on our anniversary, and, and out there is Pettigene Mountain, all the trails and this and that. And here are these two little, you know, city slickers out in the middle of nowhere. We're in our flip-flops, you know, and, and, and we said, you know what, let's just go down one of these trails. So we go down one of the little steep trails and this and that, and, and we come to this point, and we're like, well, which way do we go? And Stephanie's like, well, let's go this way. I said, okay, so let's go this way. So we took a left. Well, lo and behold, we took one of the Boy Scout trails. Not one of the little touristy trails that gets you back. The Boy Scout trail, okay? And so here we're following this. And before you know it, we're turned around. We don't have a... 
A, we didn't bring any water. B, we're in flip-flops. And C, we have no clue where we're at because where we were, the cell phones did not work. You know what I'm saying? And so we're looking around. And I, you know, that tree looked familiar and that tree, and before you knew it, there was these little slithery things and these flying things that were coming after us. You remember that? Something comes zooming by my head and I, my poor wife had to defend for herself. I was gone. Flip-flops and all, I was gone. Before you know it, we were confused where we were at, and we finally found this open space. And we're looking down this way, and we're looking down this way. Listen, what's going to only be a 30-minute trek turned out to be a a two-and-a-half-hour walk in the wilderness experience with these city slickers. And here we are. And I said, I'm confused. I don't know where we're at. Do you know where you're at? No, she didn't know where we're at. And finally, guess what? We found a map. And we knew where we were at. Lo and behold, we were way away from our vehicle. And the only way that we could get back to our vehicle is two ways. We could go back to the resort and then walk that trek all the way down the highway, which was another three or four miles. Or we could go back... Really, we only trekked two miles, but boy, two and a half hours, that was a long trek. I said, we could turn around and go right back the way we came in. Guess what we did? (laughs) We went the highway route, you know, because we knew where we were. When you know where you are, the trek can become a little bit more easy to trek. Listen, when they're out in the wilderness, they didn't know where they were going. They had no clue. They'd never been out there. Listen, this group of people, all they knew was Egypt. You see, their forefathers, were they lived in the land of promise. They knew what it was like to be in the land of Canaan. They, they understood what it was there. They, they knew the surroundings. They knew the desert land. They were familiar with it. But when they moved to Egypt during the plague, during the time of Joseph's days, that generation, there were several generations that passed. They never knew that area. And it could become confusing. They weren't familiar with their surroundings. But my friends, when you're confused and you don't know which way to go, if you don't know which is up and down and left and right, Can I tell you something? All you have to do is get yourself into the presence of God. And when you get into the presence of God, He will bring a sense of comfort to you and He will guide you to where He wants you to be. I understand the wilderness experience can be lonely. It can be scary. It can be confusing at times. But if you want God to be God in your life, then surrender and let Him be your God and guide you to where He wants you to be. Secondly, after God's manifested His his supernatural guidance to them through a pillar of fire by night and a cloud uh, by day, He also manifested His direction and guidance in the way of the Ark of the Covenant that helped them walk through their battles. Turn with me, if you will, to Joshua chapter 3. I love the book of Joshua. The book of Joshua is a man's book. It is a book of war and conquering. Now, I don't know what's more manly than war and conquering, right? But the book of Joshua, chapter 3. Moses is out of the scene now. Moses is dead. Joshua has been declared the rightful leader, the successor of Moses. The Bible tells us that Moses laid his hands on Joshua and the Spirit of the Lord came upon Joshua to be the leader of the children of Israel. And then they, they, were, they were trying to get a game plan and God spoke to Joshua. He spoke to him these words. Verse 1. He says, Then Joshua rose early in the morning and they set out to Shittim. And they came to the Jordan and he and all the people of Israel and lodged there before they passed over. At the end of three days, the officers went through the camp and commanded the people, As soon as you see the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God being carried by the Levitical priests, then you shall set out from your place and follow it. Yet there shall be a distance between you and it, about 2,000 cubits in length. Do not come near it, in order that you may know the way you shall go, for you have not passed this way before. 
Then Joshua said to the people, Consecrate yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. And Joshua said to the priests, Take up the Ark of the Covenant and pass on before the people. So they took up the Ark of the Covenant and they went before the people. Wow. Can you imagine what it's like to be the children of Israel now? Moses is gone. Joshua's the new leader. We're on the brink of the Jordan River. We're on the bank of the Jordan River. We're getting ready to go in and possess that which God said belonged to us. The excitement that was taking place. But my friends, I'm sure that there was a little bit of antsiness and anxiety that, that filled their heart. And Joshua says, listen, the Ark of the Covenant, that which is the very symbol of the presence of God. You see that? Listen, the pillar of cloud and the pillar of fire is no longer leading them through. It's the Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant is now at the, at the place where they're going to they're gonna follow it. And God told Joshua to say this to him. He says, listen, I want you to follow. When you see the Ark of the Covenant, it's time for you to start picking up your stuff. It's time to pick up everything you own and get ready to go after Him. And when you see it, go after the Ark of the Covenant. But put 2,000 cubits in between you and the Ark of the Covenant. For the Ark of the Covenant is going to go by the way in which you do not know. My my friends, when we go into battle, there are times we don't know how to wage war. But if you allow the presence of God to go before you, guess what? God will, he will make a way for you in the heat of battle. In the heat of battle. Listen, we have to do what we're supposed to do, right? The Apostle Paul says, put on the whole armor of God. And then he goes on and says, and once you have done everything that you know what to do, guess what he said? Stand. He didn't say fight. He didn't say go on the offense. He said stand. Why? Because when the presence of God goes before you, your God fights on your behalf. Think about this one. I don't even have the reference here, but there was a time that the children of Israel were, 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 were facing this opposition. The armies, uh, their enemies were, were building up against them and, the, and, and the, the people were going frantic and the word of the Lord came to them and said, listen, I, I am going to fight your battles for you. So the word of the Lord came to the king and he said to the king, he says, what I want you to do is I want you to send Judah out first. I want you to send the worshipers out first and they're going to sing and they're going to play their trumpets and they're going to do all of these things. And all they did was they worship God. They worship God. They worship God. Guess what happens when you worship God? The Bible tells us in Psalms that God inhabits the praises of His people. God inhabits the praises of His people. And so when you praise God and you allow Him to fight before you, the moment you get to your enemy, when you get to the battlefield, guess what happened? Your enemy has already been defeated. Matter of fact, the Apostle Paul says in the, in the book of Romans, he says, the God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. He will fight the battle for you. Stop struggling. And let the presence of God do what He wants to do in your life. If you're going to let God be God, then let God guide you through His presence. Fighting for your promise can at times bring weariness. Maybe you have said in the heat of your... Listen, you're, you're, you're inheriting your promise. Listen, there, how many notes... And I've said this many times several years ago. What's at stake? The harvest is at stake. Y'all remember that? What's at stake? The harvest is at stake. What's at stake is your promise. That which God says belongs to you. And what's at stake? Man, you've you got to fight for it at times. And I get it. When you're fighting and you're in spiritual warfare and you're in the heat of the moment, there, there's a moment where weariness takes place. If you had COVID, you understand what I'm talking about. There's been times I didn't know if I could pray through some of that. There was times I didn't know if God even if God had just left me all alone. I, I got weary. I know you get weary in fighting for the promises in which God has And you might even have said these words, God, I just can't go on. I've got my white flag and I am flying it high. My friends, when you get to a place where you feel weary, you know where you need to run to. You need to run to the presence of God. Run to the presence of God because He'll guide you in the moment of battle. He'll guide you in the moments of battle. How do I know all of this? 
Well, you see it through the Scripture. You see it all throughout Scripture. Matter of fact, after the, the, uh, the Ark of the Covenant hit the, the Jordan River, the Bible says that the Jordan River split it and that the ground was dry, that all the children of Israel can walk upon it. And so when everybody was walked through that, that Jordan River banks, guess what? The water came back through, and now it's time to go inherit the promised land. So now the first obstacle that they find is Jericho. And as they're out there fight, facing Jericho, Jericho was a fortified city. It was the biggest thing that they've seen to this time. And all of a sudden, jo- Joshua was sitting here going, God, what do I do? I don't know what to do. And the word of the Lord came to Joshua. And guess what the word of the Lord says? I want you to line the people up behind the Ark of the Covenant. Why? Because the presence of the Lord will take you to places you don't know where you're going. He will fight for you. He will fight for you. Fighting for your promise can at times be overwhelming. God, I can't handle this anymore. God, if you don't do this, I'm going to die. My friends, hear me today. When you have no more energy and you have no more fight in you, get in the presence of God and let the presence of God fight for you. Hallelujah. Numbers chapter 10. In verse 35, listen to what the Bible says. It's being in reference to the Ark of the Covenant. And it says that when the Ark sets out, when the Ark moves, listen, they were to follow the Ark of the Covenant. When the Ark sets out, Moses said, Arise, O Lord, and let your enemies be scattered. And let those who hate you flee before you. My friends, let the presence of God go before you. And when the presence of God goes before you, I want you to make a declaration of faith in that moment. And say, Arise, O Lord, and let your enemies be scattered. And let those who hate you flee before you. You know what that means? It's that God is going to take care of the battle for you. Just get lost in His presence. Presence. Arise, O Lord, and let your enemies be scattered. Get lost into the presence of the Lord. And finally, Sister Joanne, if you will, come to the piano and I'll wrap this thing up soon. God's presence and His guidance was manifested through the pillar of fire and cloud in the wilderness and His guidance and direction manifested in the Ark of the Covenant in the heat of battle. But God's direction manifested today in the person of the Holy Spirit when truth is needed for life. You see, John chapter 16. Verse 12 through 15 says I still have many things to say to you this is Jesus speaking but you cannot bear them now for when the spirit of truth comes listen he will guide you into all truth for he will not speak of his own authority but whatever he hears he will speak and he will declare to you the things that are to come he will glorify me and he will take what is mine and declare it to you all that the father has is mine therefore i said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you you see the great thing about being on this side of the cross is we don't have to look for a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night to guide us. We no longer have to look for a box that was made out of gold and being carried on the shoulders of some Levitical priest so that when it moves, we move. But now that we're on this side of the cross, we've got the presence of the Lord that dwells within sight of us now. In times when you don't know which way to go. In times when you're fighting for your life and you don't know how to fight. Guess what? The presence of the Lord is with you 
all the time. The Spirit of truth will guide you into all truth. And when you don't know which way to go, ask the Holy Spirit and He will guide you in that direction. When you are lonely, ask the Holy Spirit to manifest Himself to you. And guess what happens? The Holy Spirit will manifest Himself to you. When you just can't go on and you need God to strengthen you, my friends, ask the Holy Spirit and He will strengthen you in your times of weakness. See, Jesus said in John chapter 14, verse 18, He says, I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. What does that mean? He says, I'm going to send you another counselor, the Holy Spirit. And He won't walk beside you. He will be in you. Because sometimes what we need is not an out turn, out, uh, an outside force trying to change us. We need something from the inside to change us on the outside. And only the Holy Spirit can do that. My challenge to you is this today. Let God be God. So let Him guide you in whatever situation you're in. Whether you're in the wilderness, whether you're in the heat of battle, or whether you're just doing life and you need to know what the truth is. Trust the presence of God. Because in the midst of the presence of God, there will always be provision for your need. There will, did y'all hear that? In the presence of God. When you go by the way that God wants you to go, there will always be His provisions. Which will lead us into next week's message. Letting God be God through His providing power. But you got to be in His presence first. So you got to surrender first. Very first. You got to surrender to Him. Then you got to dedicate your life to the one true God. And as you surrender your life and you dedicate your life and your worship to Him, He will guide you in every aspect of your life. Will you stand with me all across this auditorium? As the book of Hebrews is getting ready to end, the writer says, he says in verse 5, keep your life free from the love of money and be content with what you have. For he has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So then we can say confidently, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear what man can do to me. If He never leaves you nor forsakes you, guess what? You don't have to fear what takes place in your life. Father, I thank You that today we have a promise that we can stand on. That You said You will never leave us nor forsake us. That's part of your covenant name. Your covenant name that says that I am the Lord and I am present with you. That you are our banner that is over us with your presence. Father, I pray that if there is someone here today that hasn't committed their life to you, I pray that today they'll commit their life to you and they will follow you into all truth. And they will see that the wilderness experience can be a fruitful land and that the, the battlegrounds of their life can be victorious, God. I pray You will save them. Change their lives for the good. Father, for those that are in this house, they've been walking with You for many years, Lord, and they feel like they're in the wilderness. Father, I pray that they will run to Your presence. And they will find comfort in lonely times and scary times and confusing times. Father, if they're waging war in their spirit, I pray that they'll run to Your presence. And they will find healing for their weariness and their overwhelming desire to give up. Father, may they find comfort 
in your presence. Maybe they just don't know what to do. They can run to your spirit who will guide them into all truth. I pray that you will meet with us today in this house with your glory and we get lost in your presence. In Jesus' name. If you're here today and you say, Pastor, maybe you're watching online. You say, Pastor, I, I, I'm not living for the Lord. I, I don't have a relationship with God, but today I want to make that commitment. I want God to be the Lord of my life, and I want to follow Him with everything I've got. If that's you, will you lift up your hand right up and right back down and say, Pastor, pray for me. I need Jesus to be my Savior. Is there anybody here? Maybe you're watching online and you want to make that declaration. Reach out to us in the, in the comments, and we will pray for you, and we will, we will follow up with you on this decision. But how many today today will say, Pastor, I just want the presence of the Lord in my life that whether I walk through the wilderness or the battles or any aspect of my life I just want the presence of the Lord to be powerful and real and manifested in my life can I see your hand I just want the presence of God I want more of Him I believe He's going to do it will you just reach out make an altar right where you're at or if come down to the front and just ask the Holy Spirit to manifest His presence in your life right now Pastor Jonathan lead us in something Come on, church, go after the presence of God. <clears throat> Hallelujah. We want more of just to rest upon his promise and to know the Savior. don't know which way to go may we step back and let your presence lead us father for you to be God we have to take our hands off the wheel and let you direct us where you want us to go father I pray that you would go with your people today let your presence be manifested in a real and special way this week May they sense you even in times when it's not likely to be sensed, oh God. While they're at work, may they feel your hand on their shoulder. While they're at home, may they feel your comforting presence, oh God. 
when they sick, oh God, and when they are confused, Father, I pray that they will feel your presence. We love you, Father. We thank you. And we stand on your promise when you said you will never leave us nor forsake us. So go with us, I pray. Give your people rest today. Give them strength in their weary bodies, in their weary minds, and in their weary spirit. And may they be encouraged today. Bring us back safe and sound tonight that we can worship you and we can call upon the name that's above every name in prayer. And we love you for it, Lord, and we thank you for it. In Jesus' glorious name, amen and amen. God bless you. You can be dismissed. We'll see you tonight for prayer and worship at 6 o'clock.